Yeah, thanks, Lalita. So I won't be able to cover the earlier points, but uh, it's uh, the more important parts are coming through shortly. So I was just saying that Kata is something that needs to be uh, regularized without any doubt. But then BNP right now does not support this Kata regularization. And why is it? Because the process of issuing occupancy certificate in Kata for new properties is completely flawed. That needs to be set right first. There needs to be an online process introduced. The whole system of corruption and mismanagement needs to be stopped. And there's a very simple way of doing it. A simple process can be set. It can be moved online. If they do that, then we prevent future deviations unless the people, except for those people who are actually doing it nefariously. I personally believe that 90% of the people will follow the rules if the system is proper. Today, the system is completely broken. So because of that, more than 90% of the people have to resort to bribes and uh, you know, uh, having to make do with uh, dealing with officials, etc. If the process and the system changes, then 90% of the people on a go-forward basis will automatically get the occupancy certificate in Khata without having to go through a convoluted process. Once that is done, then DBMP and the state government can go for regularization of the earlier properties which have deviations. Now the problem is you will do the Khata regularization for the uh, properties that have already been constructed which are under deviation. But there is no process in place to stop the future deviations. So our uh, uh, support is for first setting the process in place for which we have a clear idea of how to go about doing that. But for obvious reasons, how to do it. That's what we want to push for on a go-forward basis where uh, PNP, by getting into the council, we want to bring the good systems and practices in place. And once that is done, then we can go for regularization. I don't think that's going to be possible to be done in the current year. So this 1,000 crores is something that I don't think will work out. For that matter, even additional 346 crores, 1,346 is what is mentioned here. Another 346 crores, I doubt. So they are able to get it because in the past, it's been more in the range of 200 to, uh, uh, let's say, about 250 crores. Uh, for the previous year, for the nine months, it's only 86 crores. But I think towards the end of the year, these things will probably accelerate. It's not paid in advance. So even if you take it as 200 crores, I think max you can expect is 250 crores. There's definitely an over-budgeting again here. Uh, then there is something called as road repairs related. This is not an expense, it's an income. So let's look at what that income is all about. Oh, sorry, by the way, I missed extraordinary cases. Uh, honestly, even I don't know what these extraordinary cases are. It's actually being collected and BBMP pays out somebody. Uh, we actually can't figure out what exactly this is. There is a library cess, there is a beggary cess, and a urban land transport cess. Uh, right now, I'm not very sure, but it's not very clear to me. In case somebody has an idea, I'm happy for you to chip in later on. Um, BBMP collects the cess from somebody and pays this to somebody. So there is also, if you look at the payments, there are some payments due on this also. I honestly don't know what this is. There is absolutely no clarity on this. Uh, so we leave that out for the moment. That amount has been uh, again in the range of about uh, 200 uh, Crores are they're projecting 341 crores. I don't think this is going to happen again. In any case, to me, it seems like a pass through. They're collecting it from somebody and they're paying somebody else. So I really don't know what that is. So we'll move on. So road repairs related in the past, uh, BBMP has been collecting about 100 to 150 crores. So interest, this is one very interesting thing that I want to put forth to all of you. You will see details here. Road repairs related. There is duct services, OFC charges, road cutting and restoration charges, road cutting permission fees, and there's one more road cutting and restoration restoration charges under different head as well. Whenever any agency digs up a road, and this is for the benefit of all of us to understand procedurally as well, all the roads are owned by BBMP. 
tomorrow, if Bescom wants to dig up a road for laying a cable, if BWSSB wants to dig up a road for laying a pipeline, if Airtel or Geo or Reliant want to dig it up for laying their cable, or anybody wants to do any work on the roads, first, they have to get a permission from BBMP, and there is a road cutting permission fees also for that. A work order can be issued only after. So tomorrow, if a road in front, in front of your house is getting dug up, you have the right to ask whether they actually have the relevant permission, have they paid the fee, and do they have a work order against that. Without that, they can't do it. And once they do it, they actually have to pay something called as a road cutting and restoration charges to BMP. There is a separate head captured for this. Now, the reality of the city is this money is getting paid, but the money that's coming out of this budget, that's getting, you know, you know, look at it this way. If an agency is paying BBMP some money to restore a road that they have dug up, and let's say it is 13th cross in, let's say, uh, Chikala Sandra, third cross. Now, logically speaking, that money, that road restoration money should be used to restore the work or the road that is there on Chikala Sandra, third cross. Unfortunately, it never happens. That money that comes in under this budget head for that cross actually goes into something else which is opaque and ultimately very likely it's getting siphoned off. So we need to have a system by which there are specific accounts or escrows that are created where the restoration charges that are being paid by any of these agencies for specific roads need to be devoted only for that, not siphoned off for uh, other projects or by others. So we need to hold people accountable. Tomorrow, when you're attending one committee meetings, if there's a road that's getting dug up, the agency that has dug up should have remitted money into the BBMP account under this specific budget head, either called 04-130505 or 05-130505. One relates to town planning, one relates to public works. Right? If that has not been remitted, and if, if there's no way that it could not have been remitted, it gets remitted, look at it. There is so much of money that is getting collected in the past, running into hundreds of crores. But there is no accountability ultimately here. Then we have um, rentals from different properties. I'm not going to go into many of the others, but I want to show something very interesting here. Advertisements. Today, if you look at it, whether there's a bus stop, or whether there's a skywalk, or whether there's a public toilet, you'll actually find advertisements of the state government, central government, and many commercial agencies also. And you know how much BBMP is collecting from that? 3.55 crores. Now, interestingly, so leave the rent aside. Rent is what they take from uh, properties that are owned by them. So I, I don't want to get into this. Here's the advertisement. Advertisement from public toilets, uh, from private land. Uh, BBMP even charges coatings that people put on private properties. Advertisement uh, tax on bus shelters, skywalks, neon signs, on vehicles. If somebody actually puts a advertisement on a neon uh, on a vehicle they are actually supposed to pay bbmp for this imagine a skywalk is a prime property a bus stop is a prime property now i'm just thinking if we had let's say i don't know about even 20 such assets between public toilets uh, bus shelters that is bus stops holdings that are there skywalks even 20 that we take. And if you look at it across wards, 200 wards, we have 4,000 such assets. I'm sure it's actually a lot more. But even if you take 4,000 of these assets, and BBMP can easily charge 1 lakh for each of these assets per month. If you charge 1 lakh per month from any of these commercial agencies or the government of Karnataka or anybody, 4,000 assets into 1 lakh is 40 crores per month. They can actually straight away generate five crores, uh, uh, 500 crores. Whereas they are generating about 3.55 crores. Right? Ridiculous. So uh, 
there are lots of leakages, lots of uh, things that can be done here, whether it's property tax related, whether it is khata, whether it is cessors, road repairs, etc. Uh, many of the other items, uh, deposits include earnest money deposits and all. These are not to be used. These are money to be paid back. So now all of this put together is 10,000. There is, again, when we translate from the PDF document to Excel, there is some amount that's gotten missed out. But it is, the budget is 10,478 crores. I don't expect them to hit the budget. But the good thing is, in the past, they've been in the range of about 7,500 to 8,500 crores. So as I said, they have over budgeted on some things. But leave the 10,478 crores. Even if they're able to generate about 9,000 crores, 9,000 to 10,000 crores, which is eminently possible. If we are able to get our, if the BNP gets its act together, we can actually generate something like close to 10,000 crores easily, which is not happening today. So 9,000 to 10,000 crores is eminently possible. It could be much, much higher. It could be 12,000, 15,000 crores if you're able to properly put systems and process in place. But right now, let's go with 10,000 crores as the number. So this is the, uh, this has been the historical receipts of BPMP. This is the current year budget estimate of BPMP. Any questions that anybody has on the receipts, I'm happy to uh, 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 sort of take that right now, relating purely to the receipts and revenues of BPMP. Uh, so Shivraman has a question, are major roads also owned by, there are other questions that are there relating to elections. Uh, we will not get into that, Shivraman. Uh, is BBMP competent to give occupancy certificate? BBMP is not just competent. BBMP is the authority to give occupancy certificate. Right? So they have to give it and they charge some money for that as part of the licenses and everything. Um, are major roads also owned by BBMP or BWD? Major roads, they, uh, there are, uh, for example, I stay on Old Madras Road. That old Madras road, the main road that I see, it's not even actually a state, it's actually central, it's part of a national highway. Um, so, but it very, a very small part of the roads are actually state government and central government. And many of these roads are actually only maintained properly. So that's not even a problem. If you look at the outer ring road, the main roads, the arterial roads, they're all already in good condition. And even if they're not in good condition, if you talk to the state government, the MLA and all, they should get it done. That is not the problem. The sub roads, the side arterial, sub arterial roads, side roads, we have 14,000 kilometers of roads in Bengaluru, out of which 13,000 or so comes under BBMP. And these are the ones that need to be set right. Uh, for which there is a very important discussion that I'm coming to shortly. Uh, but let's get to the chat window. Are there any questions? Yes, Satyalakshmi Rao has said BBMP, no funds available, they want grants. Uh, so Satyalakshmi, that's a standard thing that they keep telling us, no funds available. Obviously, 10,000 crores is a lot of money. And I'll shortly tell, come to where it's getting spent. And there you will know that there's a bigger problem that's awaiting us there. Right? Revenues is right now not the problem. Every year, we are able to get about 8,000 to 9,000 crores and that can come to 9,000 to 10,000 crores. So the money is there. The problem is, it's all getting siphoned off. That is the problem. The reason why money is not available is because it's not, BPMP is not able to generate the funds. The money is not available because bulk of it is actually getting siphoned off. That is the problem, right? So we'll shortly come to the uh, expenses. Where is this money being spent? Any specific allocation for what committees in 2023 uh, budget? Yes, I'll shortly come to it. We have to push, uh, BBMP to hold one committee meetings and hold them accountable. We have to ask them about these budgets. I, I, I'll shortly come to the expenses, as I said. Uh, but we have a game plan of what we're going to ask uh, what committees and nodal officers and what committee members will come to that. Um, so, uh, Paul, so that's the answer to Paul's question. Any specific allocation or what committees in 2022 budget? Paul will shortly come to that. 
Um, Satya Lakshmi Rao has asked, will the penalty be charged this year for which notices were sent last year? No, there are going to be no more penalties. BMP is very clear about that. We are fighting that battle. No question of uh, paying penalties on which we have not done a mistake. There could be some interest element that might be there, but that's not going to be a very significant amount. So, Satya Lakshmi, that's the answer to the question. Um, uh, penalties for defaulters will definitely be there, without any doubt. But the people on whom notices have been issued saying that there was a zonal reclassification, you didn't pay properly, those penalties have been waived off. So they are not defaulters, they know penalties. There are going to be no penalty. If they still insist on that, our protest will continue on that. Uh, advertisement on flyovers made by BDA, Manoj Kumar Sahu has asked. Manoj, I honestly don't know. Uh, uh, there are some properties which are still part of BDM, BDA, but ultimately BDA should have handed it over to BDMP. These are all BBMP. Anything that comes under BBMP permits should be BBMP property. But then today, as you saw the number, 3.55 crores from advertising. It's hardly uh, an amount that makes a difference. Um, so it should be a lot more. So you're right. Flyovers, public toilets, bus stops, um, of skywalks, hoardings. So there are so many different assets that can be leveraged. Uh, BNP's promises, if we are uh, going to be in the council, we'll push for these assets to be utilized properly. And proper revenue is coming through. Right now, it's very difficult to say why that money is not coming through, whether it's corruption or just inefficiency. Either of it is a problem. But our promise is we will ensure that all that money comes through properly for BBA. As we speak, we have crossed 50 participants. Thank you all for joining. Uh, if there are no more questions on the revenues, uh, by the way, you can uh, raise your hand also. In case you want to ask a question, please feel free to raise your hand. Uh, upon which we'll, uh, okay, we have, as we speak, I've seen one hand go up. Ravi has raised his hand. Yeah, Ravi, you can ask your question. Hey, thank you so much uh, for this call, guys. You know, so <clears throat> very good initiative. Just wanted to ask the question. So, if whenever I mean, if people, um, you know, uh, purchase a site or any registration, is is that money is also going to the BBMP or is it actually state revenue portion? No, no, it goes into BBMP. Absolutely comes into BBMP. So, you are uh, so you you are seeing Khata OC building related. So, you, if you leave out the thousand crores one-time data regularization, there is mm -hmm. 346 crores of income that is coming to. In fact, let me take you above and show you uh, specific line items relating to that so that you get your perspective on this. True, true, true. Because this is basically, so if you see the uh, state uh, state budget, right? The state budget and their revenues are actually being calculated from the uh, various cities and various uh, parts of revenues. Uh, through this registration and uh, registration channels only, right? So yeah. that money is also will be, uh, you know, uh, you know. Uh, yeah, it is under BBMP only, Ravi. It is under BBMP. So that's what I'm showing here. If you look at it, there's Kata transfer fee, Kata certificate, and Kata extract fee. There's compounding fees, uh, building license fees, betterment levy, uh, commencement and occupation certificate. There's a fee for that as well. Uh, so does it mean that so this money, whatever the charging for this, uh, all this, all these properties over here, is it not been spending to the state welfare? No, it comes to BBMP, Ravi. It's all about part of BBMP. That, that's fine. That, that's fine. I mean, this is the BPMB is part of the uh, overall state government, right? No, BBMP is not part of state government. Oh. BBMP is a completely independent uh, body, which is so uh, okay. I think uh, you'll have to cover that separately. BBMP has got nothing to do with the state though. True, 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 true. I think right. we have to be covered that like, piece of uh, Just like state government, government is completely different from the central government. We never say that the state government is the same as the, or we don't say the state government is part of the central government, right? True, true, true. I think we we, we are under that, uh, you know, uh, thought process. So yeah. we, all these all this subsidiary bodies, which in this government, I mean, which in this, uh, you know, state government whole. So they're all subsidiaries of this uh, whole government, right? So they are all- these are not subsidiaries. BBMP is a completely independent elected body. Okay. So MLS have no role to play in deciding how this money is to be spent if there is a BBMP council. Today, BBMP is being administered by the state government. 
right? Mm. Just like imagine a, a central government imposing president's rule on a state. At that time, it directly comes under the state government, but it can't remain like that forever. The state government has to get elected. Just like that, today, uh, BBMP is under state government administration. So the state government MLAs and everybody is running riot right now. But once a BBMP council with corporators are elected, the council is what? Understand. Yeah. So Nikhil is asking if uh, I miss some part. How does the amount of vehicle tax that is collected comes back to BBMP? So vehicle tax directly doesn't come under BBMP. That goes to the state government. Uh, but anyway, out of the money that the state government collects, anyway, part of it comes back as grants to BBMP. So vehicle tax, to my knowledge, I don't think it comes directly under. It comes under the state government. The RTOs and all uh, are actually under the state government. Yeah, on the chart window. Yeah, Prakash, well, they said more than 30% is depending on grants rather than the revenue generation. So, uh, Prakash, I would want to sort of rephrase that. Everybody keeps saying dependent, dependent, dependent. It's a wrong word to use. Uh, so, let's understand this very clearly. We pay income tax. Corporates pay income tax. All of that goes to the central government. Income tax is not collected by the state governments or the municipalities. So income tax goes to the central government. Then you have the uh, GST and other forms of indirect taxes. Part of it goes to the state government. Part of it goes to the central government. Then you have all these licenses, uh, property tax, etc., which is directly collected by the municipalities. Now the constitutional federal structure is this. Out of the taxes collected by the central government, the central government uses a part of that for its own use. That is to spend on defense, external affairs, national infrastructure, and other schemes that they launch. That's only about one third. The other two thirds, they have to distribute to the states. There is something called as the Central Finance Commission that in turn decides how much of money should go to the different states based on the population, size, and other demographics. The state government is not dependent on the central government. It's the central government's obligation to distribute that two-thirds or 70% of the money to the all the states. And they can't say, oh, I'll send all money to Karnataka. I'll send all money to Bihar. They can't do that. It has to be given to every single state. If even one state is deprived, the central government can be disbanded. It's unconstitutional. The Supreme Court has a right to disband the central government. So the state governments are not dependent on the, on the central government. It is the central government's obligation as per the constitution. And they have to distribute money as per a finance commission. And it has to be done properly. If it is not done properly, the central government can be disbanded. So they can't do it. It's unconstitutional. So, so which means, please understand that the state government is not dependent on the central government. It is the central government's obligation to give money to the states as per the constitution. Then what happens is the state government gets money from the central government and also gets its own direct taxes, its share of GST, the vehicle tax that you talked about, and then there are other levies that out of that, they are supposed to use about one third of that for their own purpose, managing home, state infrastructure, and other schemes that they initiate, including supporting farmers, etc. The other two thirds or 70 percent, they in turn have to distribute to the municipalities and panchayats. It is a constitutional obligation. There is something called as a state finance commission. As part of that, they have to distribute money to the municipalities and panchayats. And they have to distribute to all municipalities and all panchayats. Tomorrow they can't say that, oh, I will give to this municipality, this panchayat, I will not give it to this municipality. And it also has to be a function of what is the population and other demographics. They can't say that, oh, this panchayat uh, in North Karnataka, I will give them 5,000 crores and to Bengaluru, I'll give 5 crores. Right? The reason why Bengaluru gets 3,500 crores and that is the maximum. They can't actually 
uh, reduce that amount because then again it will become unconstitutional. So the municipality is not dependent on the uh, state government. It is the state government's obligation. Yeah, can it be reduced by 100 crores here and there? Yes, absolutely. But can't they say, can they say that 3,500 crores will become 3,000, 2,500, 2,000? They can't. If they do that, president's rule will be imposed on the state government because it's unconstitutional what they have done. So let's understand that first because I keep hearing this term. Oh, the municipality seems to be dependent. The municipality is not dependent on the state government. This has to come. Same way state government is not dependent on the central government. That money has to be constitutionally allocated. I hope that part is very clearly understood. Yes, state government. So I hope that part is clear. In, in case there is any doubt in anybody's mind, please take this notion out of your mind. There is no dependency at all. Right? So, um, Vivek M ask, uh, has asked a question. Uh, budgeted property tax includes IT parts plus malls presidential. Absolutely. In fact, uh, uh, a larger chunk of the property tax will actually come from uh, commercial properties, uh, will come from uh, 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 IT parts, malls, and all of that. The residential property tax, I don't know the numbers. In fact, we want to get those details. Will, will probably not be more than 15-20% of the overall property tax. Vivek M asked the question, where can we find the property taxes paid data by IT parks? Parks, it should be a huge amount. Yes, Vivek, we actually don't know. Uh, in fact, I'm going to constitute a team now. Uh, I want a team to work with me. We are going to dig deep into many important topics and get more information from the websites, from different sources, and many other things that we are going to do. Any of you who are interested in volunteering for it, including understanding what is happening on the property tax front, BNP wants to build up a strong technical base on this. You are welcome to uh, join, join the team. And together, we'll go deeper. Just like we have done the BNP projects which we have put out in the public domain, we want to do this also and slowly start putting things out in the public domain. Anybody who's interested, you can join the team as well. And uh, we'll all work together to get more and more information. So uh, we have to now move on to the, the other important part. Where is this money being spent? That's actually a bigger challenge than how are we generating the money? We will have, even if we don't get 10,000 crores, we'll get at least 8,500 to 9,000 crores is there for the taking, right? Plus or minus. So that amount is not the problem. How this is getting spent or how this is getting misspent is the real problem that we all as citizens face. And I'm going to share something along those lines on what is the problem that we are facing. So I'm going to take you through a, a different Excel sheet. Now. Again, I hope uh, this sheet is also visible. Yeah. The budget estimate that is there for the amount that is being spent so if you remember, that was 7,400 crores, 8,250 uh, crores. And for the current year, it's expected to be about 10,480 crores. This is the breakup of where BPMP has been spending its money in the past and where it's planning to spend its money for the current year. So look at it. There are projects, there are discretionary grants, there are welfare funds, financial assistance. We're going to create some new public amenities. There is maintenance of roads. There is maintenance of landfills. And then there is maintenance of other public amenities like drains, crematoria, uh, various buildings, parks and trees maintenance, 128 crores. BBMP schools, 28 crores. There are programs like mosquito control, etc. There's another 98 crores. So these are all the money that's spent on. This is from here to here. This totals to about 7,250 crores. Shrikant, uh, we are seeing the main table. Are you showing any uh, details for? No, the not table. yet. Are you able to see this project 3,329 crores? We are able to see the main table. Yeah, yeah. I will shortly yeah. come. There are multiple sheets here. Uh, now, this one is a lot more complicated for us to understand. This, in fact, took us the maximum time to start putting things in place. It's, a, it's a, in, Even now, 
to be very honest with you all, uh, I've still done only about 50% of the exercise. I'm trying to get deep into every line item. Uh, this year, we are now going to further launch our Lekka Beko campaign. We want to bring transparency to all of these things. We want to go line item by line item and hold people accountable for where this money is going to be spent. I'll shortly come to it. So right now, I'm just showing you that about out of the 10,500 crores, about 7,250 crores, this is 7,252 crores, is going to be spent on different types of projects, right? I, I hope you all understand projects, right? It could be the pothole filling, could be the drain clearance, garbage clearance, uh, or it could be building a house for uh, deprived people, anything relating to that, anything that comes under project about 7,250 crores. For the last year, that same amount was estimated about at about 5,000 crores. And the year before that, it was at about 4,100 crores. So I don't think we'll have about 7,250 crores, but I think we'll have about 6,000 crores to spend on projects, if not 7,500 crores. Then you have this component called as officer salary and allowances. These are all very interesting things. I personally believe that there's a lot of corruption. There's a lot of mismanagement inefficiency here. So if you look at running of BBMP, Right? This is what is called as office. So line item 14 to 23, salaries and allowances of uh, the BBMP staff, outsourcing costs, that includes the cost of power karmikas, contractors, uh, marshals, ink workers. Then you have office expenses, that includes mobile phones, printing, etc. Then you have general administration expenses, which include welfare, vehicle usage, etc. Then electricity charges, which largely relates to uh, maintenance uh, the street lights for which BBMP has to pay PESCOM, but it also includes electricity charges of running the offices. Then there is capital procurement, procuring laptops, uh, furniture, and other types of assets for the various BBMP assets. Then BBMP offices have to go through repairs and maintenance. There's an amount for that. Uh, BBMP keeps hosting some functions, celebrations. BBMP has to repay loans and interest. And I told you that there's a the right, uh, are you are you sharing the right sheet? Which sheet are you seeing? We are, we are seeing, seeing summary sheet. Deposits, such charges, those are the things which we have. Summary sheet, yes. No, summary sheet. Are you able to see 10,480.93 crores? Summary and details, two sheets are there, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. 10,471 something. Oh, no, no, no. Okay. Then I don't know why. Oh, sorry. Then I'm sorry, folks. I've been showing you a completely wrong. Uh... Oh, okay. So now I hope you're able to see the correct sheet now. These are the, you're now able to see projects, discretionary grants, welfare fund, etc. Yes, yes, yes. Ah, okay. Sorry. I, I had shifted to a different, uh, Screen, but I don't think that was going to share. So I was just saying that there are projects that BBMP uh, spends money on. So row item 2 to 12, projects, discretionary grants, welfare funds, financial assistance, new public amenities, maintenance of roads, landfills, or maintenance of public amenities, parks and trees, BBMP schools programs. Up to this, this is all projects. This is expected to be about 7,250 crores. Then to run the BBMP organization, operators have to be paid. Interestingly, 7.5 crores, 7.45 crores is allocated for paying honorarium to corporators, mayor, etc., who don't exist. That's the irony, right? 7.45 crores, we don't know to whom it's being planned, but it's a relatively small amount, so it doesn't uh, impact significantly. But today there are no corporators, there's no council. So the 7.45 crores, there's no allocation needed for that at all. But you, if you look at it, there is officer salary and allowances. Uh, that is this, uh, you know, uh, pay and allowances, salary and allowances of all the BBMP staff. Then you have, that's 900 crores. I'll shortly come to that. Then you have the power karmikas, contractors, marshals, link workers. They get paid another 1,130 crores. Then you have the office expenses, administration expenses, vehicles, fuel charges, um, and uh, let's say many other, I, I can show you the details as well, electricity charges, capital procurement, mobiles, laptops, 
um, then uh, uh, buying the vehicles, furniture and fitments, etc. All this comes under capital procurement under BBMP. Then BBMP officers have to undergo some repairs and maintenance, functions and celebrations. They have to repay loans and interest. Uh, then there is the cesses and surcharges. I told you, right? There was an urban land transport cess. Uh, there is a library cess, beggary cess. They collect it from somebody, they pay it to somebody. I don't know who they are collecting it from and who they are paying it to. But you will see a payment also here for 366 crores. But these are what are required for running BBMP. This doesn't create new assets or this doesn't go towards maintaining the existing public amenity infrastructure. So this is all BBMP staff, BBMP officers, etc. The first 12 line items were the, uh, were what you call as the public amenities, new projects, plus maintenance of existing infrastructure. Is that all clear? I hope um, the summary sheet gives you a perspective. Now coming to these items, projects, right? Year before last, 2,669 crores was spent on projects. Last year was also about 2,500 crores. This year is expected to be more than 3,000 crores. Look at the quantum of money allocated for projects. You know who's deciding it right now? The MLAs are deciding it without any transparency. Earlier, it used to be done by corporators and MLAs together. It used to get approved in the council. And today, it is getting done by MLAs. Imagine, uh, let's take it as even average 30 MLAs. It's 28 MLAs. Let's take it as 30 MLAs. 100 crores each. No transparency. This year, each MLA on an average, there are some MLAs, uh, you know, the loot is getting unevenly distributed between the MLAs because, you know, uh, some MLAs are crying hoarse that they have not got 100 crores. They are getting only 75 to 80 crores. Poor folks, uh, you know, they are not able to siphon off as much as the others are able to siphon off. But it's 100 crores plus or minus 20, 25 crores here and there, right? No transparency, no accountability. And they are going to be spending this 3,000 crores in the coming year as BBMP is going to remain under state administration. Till the time a new BBMP council comprising the 198 or the 243 corporators is going to come into place, the MLAs and the state government is going to run riot. Now, I was trying to understand, do we have some semblance of how this money is going to be spent? And I was trying to see if the budget can provide any pointers to it at all. And I'm sorry to, in case you had come in with expectations, sorry, I'm going to show you how this is um, being shown as details. So first of all, when I look at the first detail in the projects, this is all that it says. Money coming from special infrastructure project grant, 15 centers. This is effectively the same thing. This is the money that's come from the state government and the central government as grants to BBMP. And they are showing the same thing here also. But they have additional schedules called as E0501, D0502, D0501, etc. I was hoping that that will give us some more pointers to where this money is going to get spent. Brace yourself for some nonsense that you're going to see here. These are the details that they have provided here. These are those schedules B0501, E0501, etc. Leave the first few out. I'm going to come down a little bit. Uh, in fact, those are all, these are also not relating to those items. The projects come, I think projects start somewhere from here. Yeah. Now the explanation they are giving, this is a, the, by the way, this amount is in lakhs, we have not been able to convert it into crores. If you are uh, seeing the item that I have highlighted, that's 43.97 crores that was spent. And there is uh, uh, 86 crores being budgeted for the um, coming year as well. 86.83 crores. You know what it says? Maintaining of arterial and sub-arterial roads, road infrastructure in the be in the uh, eight zones of BBMP. Does that give you any extra information on where this money is going in? 
is there any additional is there one percent value add that comes from what we have from 3000 crores absolutely not i would have expected if it to say ward number 57 that is my ward has been allocated out of this 3000 crores right uh, in fact if i break 3000 crores across 200 wards it's 15 crores per ward i would have expected 15 crores or even 10 crores for my ward no there's absolutely nothing here so there are some projects that are going to be undertaken and what it says is it's going to be maintaining of arterial and subarterial roads in road infrastructure in the eight zones of BP. Now, if you look at the rest of the stuff, it's all very similar. There's another 35 crores here, right? This says maintenance of roads, flyovers, subways. How does that, now which subway, which road, are there specific projects identified in specific wards? No explanation whatsoever. You know what is getting done? They just randomly fill in these heads. A lump sum of 100 crores is given to an MLA and the MLA is uh, told very clearly, please take this 100 crores. Please siphon off as much as you can. Please don't show any accounts, no transparency. Do whatever you want. This is your hard-earned money that you need for buying your Land Rover, to buy your Rolls Royce. This is what... So instead of this, you replace this with saying buying of two Land Rovers. This account, this item, zonal public works for annual maintenance and re-asphalting of roads. This is one lump sum amount, 967 crores. You might as well say, you know, 100 Rolls Royces, 50 different villas to be bought somewhere. You know, personal aggrandizement of so-and-so MLA. You might as well replace that with this. This budget will look exactly the same. This is what is wrong about this budget document. What should be coming here is ward number 57, right? 10 crores for this ward, 15 crores. In fact, it's 15 crores for every ward. For ward number one, 15 crores, which are the projects? By the way, those guys will be deciding on specific projects. That is what we ultimately show in the BBMP, uh, BNP portal also. It will translate into projects, but these are all projects that we don't need. These are all projects that politicians need. They will randomly choose projects through which they can appoint their own contractors and they can siphon off the money. That's what is going to happen. So coming here, 3,000 crores of money allocated for MLAs, out of which almost about 2,000 crores will be given to KRIDL. If you guys don't know what KRIDL is, I'm happy to have a separate session. 40% cut to the MLA trade. The rest of the project, 60%, that also, uh, there is, the contract is going to siphon off a good part, nefarious contractors. A good part, again, will come back to the MLA. Do you know that there is an upcoming assembly election? When you see all the hoardings of the political parties coming up and all the aggrandizement that you see, please remember that you are funding these political parties, politicians, election expenses. If you want to know how the election funding is going to happen, very simple. You take this, forget this 3,329 crores. Take the amount of 3,000 crores. Multiply that by about 60%, right? Let's say about 1,800 or 2,000 crores. You can straight away take the 2,000 crores as your personal contribution to BJP, Congress, JDS, and I don't know who all, all their political party campaigns. So this project, this project, you can rename it as 60% election expenses for the political parties. That is exactly what it is. Instead, imagine if there were what committees and area sabhas that you and I were part of, you break this 3,000 crores into 200. In fact, once a BBMP council is done, that's the way it should be done. 3,000 crores divided by 200. Projects to be decided for each ward, right? 15 crores per ward. Each of us should be deciding what projects are needed in our wards. But then that's not going to happen. And on top of this, uh, that's not the end of the story. Last year, almost 1,000 crores went in discretionary grants. Apart from the 3,000 crores, another 1,000 crores of discretionary grants. What are these discretionary grants? 
there are five people there is a mayor the deputy mayor there is a chief commissioner there is a taxation and finance committee and then there is the bengaluru minister in charge each of them are given an amount and by the way there is a special development discretionary grants i don't even know who decides on this that's another 341 crores the bangalore minister who currently is the chief minister he gets another 285 crores and by discretionary you know what discretionary means i decide whatever i want tomorrow i wake up and i think a random road in a random place needs filling up and i spend it without transparency and accountability i am well within my rights to do so 1000 crores of discretionary grants i can understand each person getting about 5 crores each or let's say even 10 crores each take 25 crores each 100 crores overall i can still pay to 1000 crores out of 10000 crores going away in discretionary grants they decide what they want to do with that money and going by history it doesn't end well at all most of the money goes unaccounted so add the 1000 crores to this 3000 crores that is 4000 crores the so project plus discretionary grants can be replaced by election expenses to fund the upcoming assembly election campaign and on top of that there is welfare funds there are I communities identified sc st communities obc communities specially abled communities ews communities economically weaker sections women transgenders etc i can bet that there is no scst involved in determining how this scst money needs to be spent i can reasonably say that there is no obc involved in determining how this obc welfare fund needs to be spent for sure especially able organizations are not involved there is 36 crores plus 37 crores 73 crores that is budgeted for especially able people again none of those people from that community are going to be involved so that's the tragedy welfare funds meant for specific communities those people are not involved again very likely i don't know personally who is involved in all of this the budget doesn't say so right now it's under state government administration it must be the mlas again trying to buy for that pie who is going to get a bigger chunk of that pie so that 3000 crores has become 4000 crores add this welfare funds that is 4500 crores now i'm straight going to jump into this maintenance of roads there is 1263 crores that is being uh, i hope you are able to see this number 1263.49 crores that you will be able to see here that's another big chunk this there when i get into the details here there are four line items and the biggest line item is this repairs and maintenance which is under schedule number a0513 and when we looked at this a0513 interestingly it says Every ward, this money of 968.09 crores, budgeted for 2022-23, it is, if you are able to read this, what the budget document says is, rupees 4 crores is allocated for wards in inner zones, rupees 6 crores is allocated for wards in outer zones. Uh, I don't know which exact wards come in uh, these two categories, but suffice it to say that Wards in the middle of the city come in the inner zone. The wards in the periphery and outskirts come in the outer zones. But on an average, right, most of the wards will get, not average, every ward will get a minimum of four crores. There are quite a few wards which will get uh, uh, six crores. So if you, 968 crores, if you divide by about 198 wards, it comes to about five point odd crores, right? Uh, um, Oh, sorry, 4.7, crores. So you can roughly say that about 120 wards might get about 4 crores and another each 
and about 80, 80 watts will get about six crores each. Now the question in front of us again, this is purely for, by the way, this is purely meant for road maintenance, fixing potholes, etc. So imagine if we have about 40 kilometers to 60 kilometers of road length in each of our wards, about 10 lakhs per kilometer is coming in. 10 lakhs per kilometer. That's a lot of money for maintenance. Do we all want to go into the ward committee meetings and ask how this four crores to six crores is going to be spent? It's up to us. It's again very likely this thousand crores is a thousand crore amount. Uh, our competition is the MLAs. So there are two things that can happen. Either we put pressure through the ward committee meetings and ensure that this four to six crores is spent on projects or on road maintenance that we all want, or the MLAs could well siphon it off and take it for funding their election expenses. So if we are not diligent to that 4,500 crores that I talked about, the additional 1,000 crores might get added to that kitty, 5,500 crores of election expenses. I don't know what we can do about this uh, 3,000 plus uh, this 4,500 crores. Uh, that I think I'm already straight away assuming that that is going to go towards the election funding for the MLAs. But this 1,000 crores we can truly ensure it's spent for what we need. It's up to us. Let's start attending the ward committee meetings and ask about this four crores for wards in inner zones, six crores for wards in outer zones. For the moment, take it as four crores. Let's go and ask. And the budget head is this. The budget code is 05-220610. I repeat, the budget code is 05-220610. Under this budget, every single ward will get four crores minimum. And if you're a ward in an outer zone, you will get six crores. Let's take it up in the ward committee meetings. Let's have our say and let's make our respective wards pothole free, at least in the coming year, by utilizing thousand crores. Apart from this, there are lots of details. I don't think I'll be able to cover this. I would rather take questions. But here are some very interesting things that I want to showcase to you. Apart from maintenance of roads, there are landfills. Landfills this year are going to get about uh, 400 crores. You know where these ma landfills are? Mawali, Mandur. I, I, I saw specific names uh, also. Uh, mentioned here, there is Dodda Pidra Kallu, 3.9 crores, Subbarayana Palya, Lingadiran Halli, Kanna Halli, Sige Halli, 7.3 crores, Mandur and Mawalipura, 14.9 crores, Kannur, 50 crores, Bellali Quarries, 10.9 crores. Apart from that, you can see here, um, new landfills are getting created, Mittigana Halli, then there is, uh, you know, I don't know, some unnamed, uh, uh, this thing, our garbage is going into all these places. We have to work with the BBMP to ensure that these landfills are closed. We don't need to be maintaining landfills. We need to be recycling garbage in a scientific manner. Where we need more of recycling plants, we are you know, creating more and more landfills. And where are they getting created? Around Bengaluru, all the villages. Please remember that they are also human beings. They are, they are going to put up with all this nonsense. There is going to be more and more fight happening between us and them. In the past, we had protests that have happened in uh, Man Mandur, uh, Mawali and all these places. The fights are going to intensify. Our garbage belongs to our city. We cannot go to those landfills. 400 crores to maintain landfills and create new landfills. Are we really living in a city that we need to be proud of? I don't think so. Instead, where are the recycling plants? We need to be set up, we need to be setting up recycling plants, composting plants. We need to be environmentally conscious. Instead, we are creating more and more landfills. Thoroughly, totally disgusting and ridiculous. And this is a pet project of one of the MLAs. 
in Bengaluru. Right. In fact, I would straight away say this was a project initiated by Dr. Ashwath Narayana from the Malayshwaram Assembly Constituent. Ridiculous. They are creating more and more landfills. And most of these landfills, can you imagine 400 crores being spent on, spent on landfills? I am reasonably confident that this 400 crores is not going to go there. It's, let, again, going to get siphoned off, diverted in other places. We need to protest this allocation. Right? Look at these other allocations. By the way, do you guys know that there is 82 crores that we are spending on replacing the street lights? The replacement of burnt bulbs. That's what this 82 crores that comes under this larger budget of uh, 313 crores. There's this 313 crores maintenance of other public amenities, out of which 82 crores goes in. Uh, supposedly going in what is called as replacement of street bulbs. Now let's do a simple back of the envelope calculation. Our city has 14,000 kilometers. Many uh, uh, streets do not even have street lights. Right? So, but let's for the moment assume that BBMP has done a great job in making every single road uh, you know, properly fitted with street lights. Today, I was taking a walk around the best road that I could see. In many places, we have a street light once for every 50 meters. But for the moment, let's assume that we have a street light for every 20 meters. Right? Which means for every kilometer, we need 50 street lights. 50 street lights per kilometer. This is the best case scenario. Right? Today, we don't have that. Today, we'll probably have about one third or 20% of that. Let's leave that aside. Let's assume the absolute best case scenario that the entire city is brimming with street lights. Everywhere you go, you, you have street lights which give you adequate light. 14,000 kilometers into 50 street lights per kilometer is about 7 lakh street lights that we need to have for this city. Right? Now, if we have assuming that we have 7 lakh street lights, Right? Assuming that each street light costs about 200 rupees, which I don't know whether that is the case, it should be lower than that. And let's say each street light has to be replaced every six months. Right? Then, which means you have to spend 400 rupees per street light for the entire year. That translates to 28 crores. So I repeat assuming that the entire city is filled with street lights, which it is not today, we are probably at 20%. Assuming that we are spending about 200 rupees per street light, and I would think that the street light should last for more than six months. It should probably come for more than a year also. But even if it's assuming that it's replaced twice a year, we have to be spending 28 crores. You know what the budget is and what we've been spending in the past? Amounts which are ridiculously higher than that. Right? Where is this coming from? Very likely, the bulk of this money is getting siphoned off by showing that this money is getting collected, right? Or this money is being paid for, right? Easily a 50 to 60 crore scam sitting here happening, right? Everything is a scam here, but this is probably a 50 to 60 crore scam that we are talking of. <laughs> then let's look at other interesting items that we can see here. UGD and water supply assets, 57 crores budgeted. You know what the irony of this 57 crores is? UGD and water supply is not even done by BBMP, it's done by BWSSB. I really don't know what BBMP is doing with the UGD and water supply assets. That doesn't even come under BBMP right now. And that's something that BWSSB is collecting money for. But BBMP is paying 57 crores for God knows what. 57 crores camp potentially happening there, right? Lake maintenance expense 28 crores. God only knows what's happening to that. Right? Every small thing that you see here, there is a scam happening. Uh, only thing is, each one is a smaller or a bigger scam, depending on the scale. Right? Then comes other interesting aspects. Uh, by the way, parks and trees maintenance. Here are some interesting things that I need to show you. We know that about 92 crores is budgeted for maintaining parks and gardens. I don't know how many parks and gardens are there. 
right and last year we spent about uh, close to 100 crores on this or 80 crores at least on this now what do we need 80 crores to spend on repairs and maintenance of parks and gardens again if i were to take the analogy of streetlights probably about 15 20 crores might be getting spent here but what is being show, shown on the books is 80 crores what's happening to the rest of the money i don't even want to tell you you, you and i know the answers to it there are about 200 bbmp schools midday meals notes notebooks uniforms school bags the other day i was going to an anganwadi None of them get any of this. Naam ke vaste, they will show something. Very likely that out of this 28 crores that is budgeted and that is being spent, they will probably spend about 1 crore or, or probably 5 crores out of this. The rest of it is siphoned off. Then there are all these programs, mosquito control programs. Uh, there is street dog management program. Street dog management, they are going to be spending 60 crores. And last year, they spent about 60 to 65 crores. What do they do this for? Straight away, you can discount 40, 50 crores out of that going off. Right? Then I told you about this corporator's expenses, 7.45 crores of honorarium. Uh, you know, why budget something for a council that doesn't exist? I can't understand at all. And here's the one that I wanted to show you. Uh, just as quick last items. Um, there is 900 crores of pay and officer, pay salary and allowance of uh, officers, right? That is your uh, commissioner, special commissioners, to AEs, to AEEs, to health inspectors, to the doctors, etc. If you're talking of 900 crores, that is the salary and allowances. If I were to even take an average of 9 lakhs per annum as salary and allowances for them, right? I'm not even talking of welfare and benefits that comes under general administration. Uh, leave that out. Even if you take 9 lakhs per annum for this, you know how many employees we are talking of for BBMP? 9,000 or 10,000 employees. We are talking of 10,000 employees spread across 200, what? 50 employees or even if you take 1,000 employees centrally sitting in some central offices, etc. 9,000 employees across 200 wards. We need to be having 45 employees per ward. Now, who are these people? Where are they? 10,000 people, right? It's one of the largest employers in the country. Who are they? Where are they? Are they doing any work? Are they being held accountable? No answers. Then comes to this outsourcing cost, right? You know, the interesting thing about this outsourcing cost, this includes all your aura karmikas, marshals, I'm just going to you know how much the power karmikas are getting paid supposedly that is 300 crores and you know how much that is the 300 crores budgeted here you know how much the contractors who are managing the power karmikas are getting paid they're getting paid double 600 crores for what for maintaining those tippers and all of that which they don't even own. This has been tout touted as one of the biggest scams happening in the city under solid waste management, right? They will probably, in fact, many of the power karmikas don't even get paid on time. They, they are made to wait for three months, six months. They get only half their salaries. That's a different thing altogether. But even providing for this, they get paid 300 crores, supposedly. And the contractors are getting paid 600 crores. We need details. Who are these contractors? Assembly constituency by assembly constituency. What by what? Why are they getting paid this month? BNP inst intends to get into all these details, step by step, and slowly start unearthing all of this and to bring governance to the city. Apart from this, this covers, you know, marshals in the Indra canteen, the uh, marshals that we have in the ward for holidays management. It covers the link workers. Uh, it covers medical and health consultants, many of whom I'm very confident don't even exist on, uh, you know, on the ground. They exist only on paper. We will get all these details. We will get more details of do these marshals really exist, consultants really exist, etc. Every line item that you take is filled with scams and filled with things that are not really required. I don't even want to get into these other items. These are the main items I wanted to cover. 
We have about 15 minutes left. Happy for people to raise their hands and ask any questions. In the meantime, let's see if there are any questions from people. So Prakash Bilde has asked, is there no detailed explanation provided in some attachment or somewhere for each of the expenses? Uh, what we have in the budget document, we have shown to you, Prakash, as BNP, we intend to get more and more into the details. We don't intend to let them go unaccounted, right? Uh, so Paul has asked, are these 100 plus crores excluding the already allocated 150 to 200 crores to MLAs by Mr. Momai? Yes, absolutely, Paul. The MLA funds are separate. The state government funds are separate. Those 150, 200 crores is independent of this 100 crores, not just 100 crores. If you divide, uh, I would say about 5,000 to 6,000 crores out of the BPMP budget, divide by uh, 200 watts, that's another, uh, that's another actually easily another 200 to 300 crores. Uh, the BBMP account, which is coming under state administration this year, which they are going to siphon off this year, right? So absolutely separate from that. So each MLA is going to be laying his hands on about 500 crores or thereabouts. So next time you see the cutouts of all these people and all, it's your money, my money, our money, which is all getting uh, used by the MLAs to fund their political and election campaigns. Please don't forget this. We all need to keep this in our minds. Sorry, I need to in the meantime, anybody wants to raise their hands. Hey, you, sir. Just hold on. Hey, Shrikant, thank you so much for this information. It's very, very detailed information. I never... <laughs> Before I joined to this call, I thought that it is, it's a different way of uh, projection. Uh, but the way you projected with the, with the, with the stats is very amazing to see the stats and to know these accounts. Definitely, you know, I'm not sure how, how I'm, I'm an individual can help uh, to bring this to the people of Bangalore. Uh, you know, to fight with these, uh, the big giants, the big giants of MLAs, you know, yeah, Ravi, there's a very simple way you can play a role. Get some of us into the council. Help get some of us into the council. True, we can true. bring transparency, governance, accountability, citizen participation, like you never could have imagined or dreamt. Imagine sitting from outside the system. We're able to do this level of analysis and get into it. Imagine what all we can do if we're able to get into the system. Very true, very true. And, and, and I feel that this the same kind of content should reach to the very, very common people of this Bangalore. Very, very yes. common people of this Bangalore. Hence, they have to know that. So what is this happening behind the story of these accounts? Yeah. That, that's what I feel so. And thank you so much. Thank you so much for this info. Yeah. Amazing work. Yeah. In fact, Nikhil has asked a question. Do the expenses budget for the cost of the employees involved in doing those? No, Nikhil, absolutely not. The employees cost all covered in the 900 crores and 1,100 crores. The 82 crores that I just talked about, it is pure replacing the bulbs and nothing else. That is what it is meant for. That, All that the costs relating right. to the salaries, the vehicle expenses, it's all covered under different heads. That's what you're all seeing here. So this one, this 82 crores, for example, that I just talked about, it's purely relating to just replacement of the street bulbs, which as per my estimate, uh, even if you take, I don't see 7 lakh street lights in the city, We'll probably have about 2 lakhs. I would think they're probably spending about, I don't know, about 200 uh, to 300 rupees per annum on that at most. Uh, that will be about 4 to 5 crores. Or uh, I will give the benefit of the doubt to them, max 10 crores they might be spending on that, but showing about 80 crores. 70 crores, again, whose pockets it is getting into and how it is getting into also it's known. Contractors have said, right? You book a contractor for buying street lights, right? You will show uh, 100 street lights procured and 100 street lights fitted. Actual number of street lights fitted is 10. Rest of the money that goes to the contractor, who is probably a relative of the co corporator or the MLA, that money comes back into the 
MLAs or the corporators' hands. That's how our hard-earned money is getting siphoned off. Sorry, Nikhil, if you had anything more to talk. Right, right, right. Yeah, yeah. Which, like, your point makes it even worse, right? I was initially kind of budgeting that okay, maybe employee costs also may be involved or not. But yeah, what you said makes it worse. Um, this is like absolutely fantastic work that you folks done, right? My question is, how are you folks planning to share this with more and more people? Like, how are you like planning to use social media and uh, uh, all the other kind of mediums, right, to share this with the wider, wider folks? Yeah, so we are planning to start another Lekabeku campaign. We will take each of these items rather than talking at a larger level. We'll get into details of each of the items. And we'll start putting out some videos and posters on this. Uh, mm -hmm. In case you're interested in being part of the team, uh, please do put a message on the on the group. Uh, I'll ask Lalita to note down. And then you can actually be part of the team and let's start running a campaign to make people aware and uh, take things out. Sure, cool. Thanks. Yeah, thanks, Nikhil. Pungode and Siddharth have also raised their hands. Pungode, you can ask your question. Or Siddharth, you can ask your question. Yeah, Pungode, go first. Uh, no, my simple question is on what basis this budgeting things are like on focusing on city development is there is something like uh, they had the mind saying like yeah we are focusing on this point at least for this financial year to bring some differentiation something is there in the budget oh there's actually a fairly detailed working which is there over there that's not shown in the budget that detailed working if you look at it uh, for example, if you take a Bangalore South Assembly constituency, uh, the backward calculation is that 1,000 crores needed for election expenses, out of which probably about 200 crores will come from uh, money already, uh, you know, or 300 crores already uh, that has come, you know, which I, I've already sourced. Another 200 crores will come from uh, the, uh, you know, various corporate aspirants and all who have to give. And another 500 crores has to come from the source. So that is the basis for this budget for each assembly constituency, which gets broken down, you know, uh, all of this. So I hope that gives you a perspective, Pumadai. Yep. That's exactly how it is happening. And I will tell you how it should happen. I, As I told you, 3,000 crores of projects, I straight away gave you the answer. 200 wards, 15 crores, ward committees and area sabas in which we should be part of it. We identify the projects that should have been done. And then that four to six crores of roads maintenance, we should be identi identifying the roads to be maintained. That will work out about 20 crores. In fact, if you look, remove the discretionary grant, that will give another, uh, let's say, five crores per watt. So you will get about 25 to 30 crores per watt. That 25 to 30 crores per watt, citizens through area sabhas and watt committees, we should have been building the projects ground up, taken it to the BBMP council, and those projects should have gotten approved. But today, there's absolutely no transparency on this. And that's what this budget document shows. This budget effectively confirms that our money gets siphoned off. We have all been take, being taken for a ride for so long and we will continue to be taken for a ride. So it's up to us whether we want change or not is the is what this budget document poses. The budget document poses a 10,000 crore question, a question worth 10,000 crores. Do we want the old style of working or do we want a new style of working? So, yeah, sorry I, for that, uh, uh, you know, a kind of an answer, Pumadi. That's the only answer I have right now. Even I don't have any other answers. Sorry, Siddharth. You can go next. Yeah, now, Shrikant, what I wanted to say was that there was this earlier person who mentioned about how we are going to reach it to the public. So I just wanted to know if there's anyone in the group or listening or if they know anyone who has any contact with the, you know, uh, media guys or the uh electronic media where they can call us for a debate where we can show these statistics and to you know make it reach the public yeah so i think what we need to do siddharth uh, and others let's get into a separate conversation let's start working on how do we want to build this up as a campaign uh and then let's uh work seriously towards building this up and uh so let's uh we'll we'll take this offline yeah, correct. But what I was trying to find out is that if there's anyone in this group who's attending this meeting now, they can help us out. Yeah, that's what. So we've already put out a message. We'll, we'll actually put out another message on the group system. Why don't we constitute a team separately and then we'll work as a team? 
So sure. regarding the team, I have posted my number and uh, please whoever wants to be a part of this can call me, can message me because individually noting down numbers may become difficult. So please message me separately. We will constitute. I have posted my number there. So our team will start working on the details and we want to run a campaign. So let's let's all get going on this. Any other questions? Anybody else wants to raise the hand? Please feel free to. Okay, Shrikan, so I... This is a very interesting one. I believe next week also you will help us understand a little bit more. We can uh, dissect a little more and probably if there is more to understand. It really became an eye opener and uh, hope yeah. to learn more. And another question was the way, say BBMP to, scores. Uh, just to ensure uh, that I'm on the, uh, we are all on the same page. Did people find this session interesting? I would like people to post your response on the chat window to see if we can have a follow-on session next week and get into further levels of uh, some uh, some further levels of detail as well. So it will be very useful for me to know if we need to continue this uh, session next week also. And in fact, so what I, what I, you know, so this recording should have to be spread across to the people. I know, so you can give the same session again and again, but rather I feel that this recording should have to be spread across to the people. Yeah. Through, because this is how the channel, because see, the, the technology can be used, but you know, so one thing at least uh, ignite the people that when, whenever they see this kind of numbers, at least they will see some kind of fire in their minds. Yeah, and in so, fact, I know that def, this 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 if, if this reaches to the MLAs and MLA PAs, you know they will definitely see some kind of hesitation in the market. Yeah, sure. We'll we'll start working on a campaign. Yeah. 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 Srikanth, I had other question. BBMP school maintenance. I know that. Among the schools, there are some state government run uh, and managed schools. And how do we identify BBMP run schools? We'll uh, take it offline, Lalita. There are ways of doing okay. it. We already yeah. have a list, uh, but I, I don't think it's updated. We just don't need to know not just the number of schools, how many teachers are there, which are operational. So there's a lot of mismanagement that's happening, right? You saw the 28 crores reserved for education. Uh, in fact, this amount that we are seeing here, right? Yeah. I, I would think that at least 25 crores. I, that, as you said, right, uh, this is 28 crores for BPMP. If I look at the Anganwadis and the government schools and all, you see the pathetic nature of the uh, government schools in Bangalore, right? Uh, forget Karna, you know, the rest of Karnataka. Uh, bulk of the money gets siphoned up. Every year, amounts get allocated. And you know what? As we speak yesterday, in that Anganwadi, I distributed uh, 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 notebooks and uh, some you know material for children they didn't have it now where is all this money going right all of this is getting siphoned out by these MLAs by the, in the city it's time for us to put a and I put seven thousand rupees from my pocket to just fund some of these students yesterday and many of us are doing it in that in that fashion but the reality is hundreds and thousands of crores are being siphoned off in the name of all this education healthcare parks and trees amenities etc time to bring about a change. So yeah, generally, I think the sense that I'm getting on the chat window is that the session was definitely useful and people are looking forward to more sessions also. Uh, great. I will take that as uh, uh, a confirmation that you all liked the session, you enjoyed it, you learned, and as a confirmation that we will indeed do this session next week also. So it's a, a 6.30 now. We'll bring the meeting to a conclusion. Thanks all for joining. Uh, we will uh, take this. Oh, by the way, sorry. There are three participants who have raised their hands also. One minute. Yeah, Paul has raised his hand as well. So Paul, you can ask your question. Uh, Srikanth, very good evening. And firstly, thank you very much for a wonderful session this evening. Uh, I have two questions, uh, Srikanth. One, uh, uh, the uh, is there any kind of specific 
uh, budget that has been allocated for what committees in the budget, one. Secondly, uh, there was a 60 lakhs allocation that was done sometime last year, November time frame, which is completely unspent. So what happens to the unspent 60 lakhs rupees in the ward committees? Any insights on that? See, so Paul, with a larger question, even if you look at this document, so the budget document, here in some of these things, you will see that uh, many of these things will have pending, ongoing works and new works. Mm -hmm. So technically, some of this budget gets spilt over into the next year. Right? So that's what happens. With regard to your other question, is there money allocated for what committees? But I think you might have to go on mute. Uh, on. This lot of oh, sorry, sorry, sorry. So I will tell you which are all the amounts allocated for the what committees. It is 3,329.97 crores. That is allocated for, should have been allocated for what committees. 836.75 crores, ward committees. 604.75, 22.15. So if I look at all of these, 7,250 crores put together is what should have been allocated, or rather is allocated for ward committees. If the BBMP council had been there, if we had had corporators, and if the corporate had constituted a proper ward committee in Kiriya Sabha, if the citizens had been involved in this, and if the citizens had decided that, you know, uh, for welfare funds, can we identify the SCST communities to be uh, benefited? Can we identify the EWS communities to be benefited? Can we determine the discretion? If this, could have, this should have been a discretionary grant, not for the mayor and deputy mayor. This, have, this should have been a discretionary grant for the area Sabha, the ward committees. But that's what this all, this whole thing is all about, right? If the council was there, that's how it should have been done. But today, it's being run by the state government. It's administered by the state government. So it's being uh, done by the MLA without, forget about what committees. Even people within, a, you know, the MLA's own party, they don't know how this money is going to be spent. They just run riot with this money. So I would say, if not 7,250 crores, at least 6,000 crores. That is divided by 200, 30 crores per ward. Uh, of course, it should uh, adhere to this, right? Uh, let's say out of 6,000 crores, 3,000 crores was for projects. Then that 15 crores should have been uh, for the projects. Then welfare funds, if it was going to be 600 crores, 2 crores per ward should have been for welfare funds. But the ward committees should have decided, right? That is the essence of municipal government, which is not happening today. Does that answer your question, Paul? Uh, yes, uh, Srikanth, I was referring to uh, the uh, specific allocation to increase the citizen participation. In fact, last November, December timeframe, uh, they gave 20 lakhs for portfolio filling, 20 lakhs for, uh, for uh, footpaths, and 20 lakhs for borehole maintenance. This was the allocation that was specifically given to ward committee sometime last year end to increase the citizen participation. Okay. But that's a, that's a red herring that's been put to us all. Uh, there is no question of BBMP allocating 60 lakhs to a ward committee. The whole 6,000 crore budget, as okay. per the, the the way the constitution is designed, the mm -hmm. entire 6,000 crore should be decided by area sabhas and ward committees. Correct, correct, yeah. So by, by showing it's almost like they're doing us a favor, they're not doing us a favor. <laughs> area sabhas and ward committees should be constituted to actually do this. Correct. You're absolutely right. Absolutely right. Uh, but however, uh, to increase this participation, they did something like specifically, uh, but I don't know whether in this budget there were any there kind is, of allocations as such. That no they go award, to... There is no award where citizens were practically consulted. We were technically consulted, but they just went and did projects on their own. Okay. Mm -hmm. so okay. They should be constituting, but at least what we can do is, now that we know these details, mm -hmm. we can go to what committee meetings and ask in this mm -hmm. 3,329 crore project, uh, project budget allocated. Mm. How much is allocated for our ward? Please tell us. Discretionary grants of 836 crores, how much is for my ward? Welfare funds, how much is for my ward? Then that four to six crores, this maintenance of roads, four to six, four crores for the wards in the inner zone, six crores for the wards in the outer zones. How much of it is, uh, or rather that money, it, it's not how much. We know it's four crores or six crores. Uh, we have to ask them, now how are you going to decide it? We want to have a say. That is how we need to be participating in the board committee. Absolutely true. Thank you so, so much, Srikanth. Yep. Yeah. Which ward are you in, Paul? 
Um, currently from uh, Kone Nagrara War. Kone Nagrara, yeah, yep. great. Thank you. Okay, so thanks all. Do rejoin me. Uh, I don't see any other hands. There were lots of chat window uh, points. Quest. I think you know, I think a lot of interest in doing this follow-on session. And uh, I don't see any more hands raised, which means we bring this session to a conclusion. Thanks all. Have a good week ahead. See you again at 5 p.m. on the same link on 10th April. See you all. Bye. Thank you all.